Um, so, I mean, I guess like a lot of us in the department, we've I was cur I've always been curious uh, and interested in science, um, and did my undergraduate degree at University of Toronto um, and studied molecular biology. And during that degree, I got really interested in, in DNA damage responses and understanding how the cell dealt with that DNA damage. And so I, I started my PhD actually in medical biophysics, so I'm, I'm an MVP alumnus, um, and studied with uh, Rob Bristow DNA damage responses and, and how they're important for radiotherapy uh, in patients. Um, and so I finished my PhD here in, in 2012. Um, and wanted to continue in the area and, and study some, some fundamental uh, biochemical mechanisms behind the DNA damage response. So I moved to Philadelphia and did a postdoc for five years with Roger Greenberg, um, studying a couple of things, uh, partly how DNA damage responses influence transcription and also how um, DNA damage responses are important for uh, inflammatory signaling. And those are sort of the foundational aspects of of the lab as we've established it uh, here now. Yeah, I mean, ha having been here before, I, I, you know, you recognize the strengths of, of being in an institute the size of the University of Toronto and, and having access to, you know, so many experts in, in various fields. Um, Princess Margaret is also particularly unique because of its um, focus on patient um, uh, on treating patients uh, with cancer and improving uh, improving that therapy. So being able to do that, you know, having the, the basic science aspects um, that are sort of the foundation of, of my work uh, and being able to bring that uh, to patients and, and adapt that into clinical changes uh, is certainly really uh, attractive to me. Yeah, so, so we do definitely study DNA damage. That's really a foundation in the lab. So I'm interested in genome stability uh, broadly and, and in sort of two distinct but related ways. One is in how DNA damage and DNA damage responses suppress changes in, in cells. So preventing them from becoming cancer by mutating uh, their DNA or in, in other ways that, it, that DNA damage may lead to changes in cellular physiology. And so one, of the, one aspect of the lab really focuses on how DNA damage responses interact with ongoing processes in the cell. So for example, how a DNA double strand break would influence transcription close to that break. And so there's several really interesting questions asking how the chromatin changes in those contexts. Um, and how the 3D organization of the nucleus changes in those contexts. Um, so that's one really exciting aspect. The other part of the lab is really interested in how cancer therapies overwhelm DNA damage responses. So if you give, for example, during radiotherapy, if you give enough DNA damage, it actually leads to cell death. Um, and that's why radiotherapy works to help cure cancer patients. So we're really interested in how, in that instance, um, cellular signaling changes and how it activates different signaling responses, in particular how it activates inflammation. Um, and we've recently shown that there's an important pathway induced by radiation that initiates inflammation, uh, inflammatory signaling, and, that, and how that inflammatory signaling can stimulate the immune system. And in this instance, it's, it's a really important aspect to how radiotherapy can be combined with immunotherapy to help treat patients. And so the other really, I think, exciting aspect of the lab is understanding how these inflammatory signals are activated and how we can exploit that to improve treatment for patients. Yeah, so, so we're new, so we're in the sort of in the midst of establishing these collaborations uh, in the lab. Because of my time here before, we have, I have a lot of relationships, especially with clinicians in radiation oncology, um, that we're starting to, to um, move forward. And, and certainly that's, that's, I think, the biggest strength of Princess Margaret is the fact that we can work with clinicians to really uh, move these things into the clinic. So we're working on establishing some of those collaborations and, and understanding how we can combine radiation and immunotherapy uh, in patients. I think, you know, I mean every graduate student is unique. That There's sort of three, I think if I were to say three qualities that I think are really important. Um, 
One is enthusiasm. It takes a certain amount of, of excitement and, and motivation to, to pursue graduate studies and really to, to pursue it for the full length of time that it takes because it's a, a big investment in time. Um, I also look for ambition. I think we're, we're tackling really challenging problems uh, in the cancer field and in biology in general. Um, and it takes a certain amount of ambition and bold um, approaches to the science to, to advance those things. Um, so, th so those, uh, certainly ambition and enthusiasm are important. And I think what underlies all of that is curiosity. And so, you know, a student that's particularly curious and asking questions, uh, regularly, both about the direct work that they're doing and sort of more tangentially, I think is really important because oftentimes we can make connections just by asking questions uh, that we wouldn't have made, you know, if we were just sort of insular in, in our focus. Yeah, I think, I mean, my approach generally is in order to be ambitious and enthusiastic and curious, I think it's important that students are able to sort of take ownership of what they're doing and I think that that requires a certain amount of independence and sort of exploring um, uh, where exactly they want to go and so you know my my job I think is to help them choose the most potentially productive areas in which to go but to give them a bit of latitude to sort of take that the way they want um, but at the same time it's also my job to help say this is possibly an unlikely an avenue for success and so to sort of guide into a particular way. I'm still a bench scientist, I'm still at the bench um, and so um, I enjoy that the sort of hands-on day-to-day stuff um, but I think it's really important for the students to kind of develop their own um, their own path in, in a lot of ways with guidance from from me and others in the lab for that matter. Right. So, I mean, I think, bec again, because we're a new lab, there's a lot of latitude to, to sort of choose what, what sort of areas and the main themes of the lab uh, you want to work in. And I think, you know, because the rotations are relatively short, um, there's not a lot of time to produce a, a huge amount of data. But it's, I think it's a really good opportunity to establish a, a system or a, a procedure that you would foresee using frequently. Um, if you were to become a permanent member of the lab. Um, and I think that that sort of time span is a good opportunity to be able to sort of get your feet wet and to sort of try out some, some new things um, that you may uh, bring forward uh, as a permanent member of the group. Yeah, um, well, we just had our first child, so right now uh, a lot of my time is spent changing diapers and um, pacifying our daughter. Um, and so in my spare time, really, it's spent with my wife and daughter, just trying to have as much quality time as, as I can with them. Aside from that, um, I like to fish, uh, I like to cook, um, and I try to exercise to maintain some sort of mental stability uh, uh, through exercise and, and just that outlet. Um, so those are really my main outside of work things that I do. Uh, one of the other things I like to do in my spare time is, is woodworking and, and so I, I don't know that I, maybe I would have ended up in construction or um, in some uh, regard. Um, I like to create things um, and so maybe that would mean a career in, in engineering or, or producing something um, tangible and so those are perhaps things but I really had no backup plan. Science was kind of my, my thing so um, I, I think I'm very fortunate to, to do what I do.